This is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday, June 6, 2013. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First, according to Christianity Today, America's largest Protestant denomination released its annual self-assessment today, and most of its metrics went in one direction, down. In short, the nearly 16 million member Southern Baptist Convention gained 270 churches over the past year, but lost more than 105,000 members and 188,000 Sunday worshipers, according to its annual church profile. This marks its sixth straight year of membership decline. However, the SBC's 42 state conventions still claim almost 6 million Sunday worshipers and more than 46,000 churches. Arguably, the most important metric to Southern Baptists is baptism. Last year saw the second worst total in 60 years. The self-described reaction of Frank Page, president of the Southern Baptist Executive Committee, was God forgive us and God help us. Second today, according to Charisma News, pro-life groups on Wednesday launched a national Stop the Gosnells coalition to urge Congress and state lawmakers to take immediate action to address the lack of oversight and brutal practices occurring in the late-term abortion industry. The coalition, led by the national pro-life group Susan B. Anthony List, is dedicated to exposing the horrors of late-term abortion, most recently uncovered by the trial of convicted murderer Kermit Gosnell of Philadelphia. The coalition website, StopTheGosnells.com, features an action center where grassroots activists can contact their elected representatives to demand action. The initial featured action is to encourage support for Representative Trent Frank's nationwide Pain-Capable Unborn Child Protection Act to protect babies from abortions past 20 weeks gestation. Third, according to CBN News, people can believe a lot of crazy stuff nowadays and not be fired from their jobs. But a senior research associate at the Catholic University of Leuven learned that you better not believe that God can heal. Fernando Powells worked at the university's Research Institute for Work and Society for 11 years without a negative review, when he was suddenly fired. What happened was that the Catholic University took great displeasure with Fernando's ministry website, powerthroughlove.be, which included testimonies of people healed through the power of God. Powell said the university saw some of these movie clips of people being healed and giving their testimonies, and called them unscientific. The university, which declined an interview request, told CBN News in a statement that when a researcher working on matters of a scientific or medical nature allows religion to take the place of science, he compromises the scientific reputation of the university and breaks the bonds of trust with the university. Paul Wells said, if I'm fired because of believing something unscientific like that, that Jesus Christ still heals, I'm fine with that, but it's still wrong. Fourth today, according to the Christian Post, the son of Focus on the Family founder, Dr. James Dobson, recently claimed that his father will be denied Medicare by the IRS. Ryan Dobson, an author and co-host of two nationally syndicated radio programs, made these remarks on the program True News last week. Dobson said the person that was targeting conservative groups now can have access to every single medical record that's ever been documented on every American. That's scary. My dad works out every single day. He eats right, he exercises, he goes to his doctors. And yet under Obamacare, if he has another stroke or or if he's got medical complications, he is now at an age where they would deny a lot of those claims assuming that he's not productive. Fifth today, according to the Christian Post, the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team revealed that 11 people have turned their lives to Jesus Christ, following another tornado tragedy in Oklahoma, which on Wednesday officials said has claimed the lives of 20 people. Michael Glassy, an RRT crisis-trained chaplain from Riverside, California, said that God sheltered them, then he saved them. The U.S. was rocked by a number of tornado outbreaks in May, first in Texas that left six people dead, and then in Oklahoma two weeks ago, where the death count reached 24, 
followed by yet another that hit the Oklahoma City area on May 31st and caused 20 deaths. Six today, according to CNN, the U.S. government has obtained a top-secret court order that requires Verizon to turn over the telephone records of millions of Americans to the National Security Agency on an ongoing daily basis, the UK-based Guardian newspaper reported on Wednesday. The four-page order, which the Guardian published on its website, requires the communications giant to turn over originating and terminating telephone numbers, as well as the location, time, and duration of the calls. The order does not require the contents of conversation to be turned over. CNN has so far been unable to independently verify the authenticity of the document. If genuine, the order gives the NSA blanket access to the records of millions of Verizon customers' domestic and foreign phone calls, made between April 25th when the order was signed and July 19th when it expires. Seven today, according to CNN, six people are dead, but 14 people have been pulled out alive in a Philadelphia building collapse. Equipped with search cameras, microphones, and motion detectors, and bathed in harsh LED lights that illuminated the darkness, rescue workers combed through piles of bricks and rubble early Thursday, listening for the faint tap-tap-tapping of life buried in the ruins of a collapsed building. A day earlier, the side of a building under demolition had given way and toppled onto a Salvation Army thrift store next door. Throughout the day on Wednesday, dispirited emergency responders had carried out six people in body bags, but they received a momentary jolt of joy when shortly before midnight, they pulled out 61-year-old Myra Pleakham alive. She was the 14th survivor. Eighth today, according to CNN, a federal judge has granted a 10-day restraining order that blocks U.S. Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius from applying a policy keeping children younger than 12 years old from being prioritized for available adult lung transplants. The move by District Court Judge Michael Blason of Philadelphia could improve the chances for Sarah Mernigan a 10-year-old Pennsylvania girl with cystic fibrosis to get a new set of lungs. The girl's parents have said that Sarah could die within weeks without a transplant. In a written statement, the family added, We are experiencing many emotions, relief, happiness, gratitude, and for the first time in months, hope. The Mernigans had argued that since the number of children's lungs available through organ donation programs is so small, Sarah and other pediatric patients like her should be added to the list of people waiting for adult lungs, prioritized by severity of their illnesses. Ninth today, according to Reuters, President Barack Obama will encourage American schools to engage their digital era students by providing more laptops with high-speed internet connections and fewer textbooks and lectures. Today, Obama will tour a middle school in Mooresville, North Carolina, that has improved its test scores and graduation rates through digital learning, an approach that is favored in countries like South Korea, which is phasing out printed textbooks by 2016. This is about transforming teaching and learning in this country, an administration official told reporters ahead of Obama's trip. The average American school has a slower internet connection than the typical American home and many schools cannot stream an internet video in more than one classroom at the same time. The official said the administration wants schools to have access to high-speed broadband and wireless within five years, so students can use devices at their desk. Tenth and finally today, according to the New York Times, rebels fighting the Syrian government on Thursday seized control of the only border crossing operated by the United Nations peacekeeping forces, along the Israeli-Syrian ceasefire line in the Golan Heights, according to the Israeli military and rebel forces. Israeli forces were placed on alert in the sensitive and disputed area as the violence of the civil war threatened to spill over into Israeli-held territory. But a few hours later, the situation remained confused. Israeli media reports said that the Syrian government forces appeared to have retaken the Kenitra crossing, though there was no immediate confirmation of this in the official Syrian state media. Ahmad al-Bashir, a member of the local revolutionary committee in the Kenitra area, who was reached by Skype, insisted that the crossing was still under the rebels' control and that the entire province of Kenitra had been liberated. 
That's today's top 10 news stories. You can read all about these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com. As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. Ephesians 3:17 through 19 says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. God loves you, he always has, and he always will. He loves you so much that the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you get to know him today? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose by the power of God for you. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. May God bless your day.